Alrighty. Hello, everyone, and welcome to BedCast episode 003. Today is going to all be all about uh, self-doubt and what that entails. Um, you may have noticed I skipped episode two. S- episode two was about storytellers. Um, and basically the effects that uh, oral storytelling has had on us as a people. Uh, unfortunately, that episode got nixed because I just lost the recording to it. Um, I was recording it over Discord with a bot, and the bot sent me back basically just white noise. And so, yeah. But episode three is going to be about self-doubt, um, what you can do to mitigate that, realizing that it's normal, things of that nature. I am going to um, start the episode off with the intro song from episode two. This is from a documentary that was made back in the 1970s. Um, It is featuring the folk singer Towns Van Zandt. Um, This song of his I really like. It's called Poncho and Lefty. Anyways, the documentary is called Heart Worn Highways. I honestly couldn't remember the name of it until I looked at it. So go ahead and enjoy this. Um, I'll go ahead and let the whole video play. And I'll uh, join back once it's uh, time. So, without a doubt. <laughs> I'll, play, uh, I'll play a medley of my hit. Okay, I'll take this. A medley of your hit. <laughs> <laughs> I'll play this song. <laughs> This written, I wrote this about two Mexican bandits that I saw on the TV two weeks after I wrote the song. Which is out there, right? Kind of out there. I mean, ain't that there for him. Out there for everybody else. your mama's only son but her favorite one it seems she began to cry when you said goodbye and sank into your dreams poncho was a bandit boys his horse was fast just polished steel his gun outside his pants for all the honest world to feel. Poncho met his match, you know, on the borders down in Mexico, and nobody heard his dying words. And that's the way it goes. And all the federales say. Could have had him any day. They only let him hang around. Out of kindness, I suppose. Well, Lefty, he can't sing the blues all night long like he used to. The dust that Poncho bit down south ended up in Lefty's mouth. The day they laid for Poncho low, Lefty left for Ohio, and where he got the bread to go. Oh, that ain't nobody knows. And all the federales say they could have had him any day, they only let him slip away. Out of kindness, I suppose. Pick it, and it won't ever 
for him. Poets tell how Pancho fell, left his living in a cheap hotel. The border's quiet and Cleveland's cold, so the story ends, we're told. Pancho needs your prayers, it's true, save a few for lefty too. He just did what he had to do. Could have had him any day. They only let him go so wrong. Out of kindness, I suppose. A few great federales say they could have had him any day. They only let him go so wrong. Out of kindness. I suppose. Uh, I want to hear Waiting Man to Die. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, so I'm really sad that episode two isn't going to be able to be released because it just doesn't exist anymore, but maybe. Um, in the future, I'll revisit the storyteller's theme because I really do like storytelling and the impact it's had on us and in music. And at the end of the episode, I'm going to play another um, folk song that uh, tells a story. It might not be as, um, I guess, melancholy of a tune, but um, it still tells a story. But anyways, so this episode is going to be about self-doubt. And basically what uh, that means. Um, So really, I mean, everybody goes through this. At some point, you feel that you're not good enough to do something. And so you let this kind of doubt in yourself, self-doubt, inhibit your ambitions or, you know, make you not want to do things. And... A lot of that comes down to, you know, maybe you didn't have a very supportive um, upbringing environment. Maybe you've got a lot of anxieties. Maybe you just haven't had anyone to really give you the time of day yet and, you know, tell you that, hey, you can do this. You can do whatever you want. Um, But regardless, it's something that everybody experiences to some extent. You know, some people more than others. Some people, it might be so crippling because of their anxiety that they don't ever put themselves out there. They live a life of just complete, you know, safety. Other people might, you know, be a little too reckless and, you know, maybe feel a little too overconfident in themselves and not have any self-doubt, you know, and... Obviously, there's a there's a safe amount to have, a healthy amount of self-doubt to have, but, you know, for most people, I'd imagine they feel um, probably more than they'd wish, you know, they were able to. Um, even professionals, you know, and people, I mean, you're, you know, your term professional can mean any different thing many different things, you know, they say that you become a professional once you put 10,000 hours of practice into something, I don't know if I believe that or not, I think that there are some professionals in certain fields that, you know, they're just there because they're popular, they make a lot of money, they bring in a lot of money, whatever the case may be, but a lot of professionals feel what they call is imposter syndrome, where you'll get people who are very famous in their field, very, you know, highly respected in their field, but they just feel like an imposter. And a lot of that is, you know, anxiety and self-doubt saying, you know, hey, you're not good enough despite, you know, all these accolades they might have, all these accreditations. And really it it helps um, make these people more relatable to the, the common folk 
the you know the normal you know I can't you know normal is another word that it's got so many different meanings that you know what is normal but I guess the common man um, it helps you know make them more relatable because you know if uh, the newscaster you know feels like he's an imposter because he only got this job because he knows somebody not because of the years of work he's put into this which he may or may not have he might feel like an imposter if the stand-up comic who's been doing this for 20 years is headlining tours and just one day thinks why do they think I'm funny why are these people coming to see me they might feel like an imposter in their own right I mean it could it could be any example you can think of but it definitely is something that's not often discussed and that's that's the big issue because you know anything with mental health um is just way too under discussed and i mean this is definitely is a mental health issue maybe not all the time but it definitely can be if you've got other mental health issues and that are underlying they can definitely exasperate um your amount of self-doubt or, you know, make it way worse than it really should be. And, you know, if you don't have anyone there to tell you that this is okay or normal to feel, you might feel like an outsider, like you're being ostracized. And, you know, that's not a great way to feel. But, you know, obviously reaching out to people might help you. And you gotta, you gotta just Go for your dreams, you know. I mean, not everyone's going to be able to be a race car driver, an astronaut, whatever. But if you don't put yourself out there, then you'll never know what could have been. Um, you know, your first anything you do is going to be bad. Your first podcast, your first TV show, whatever. Your first YouTube video, it doesn't matter. Whatever you I mean, well... I can't say that for everybody. There's some people who just have a natural talent or a knack at things. And, you know, their first podcast or first TV show might be the one that launches their career. You never know. But for most people, it's something that you have to improve your skill at or, you know, just get more practice under your belt before you can make a career out of something. And a lot of people feel discouraged by that because... You know, in movies, you'll see uh, the high school quarterback get drafted to an NFL team just from one game. And I mean, that may or may not happen. You know, we've got NBA stars who've been drafted, you know, out of high school. If you see, you know, and have followed LeBron James' story, that's definitely very inspiring for a lot of kids who are playing, you know, varsity basketball or even JV and they want to make it to the big leagues. You know, this kid who didn't go to college is playing, you know, in the major leagues straight out of high school, and that's definitely very inspiring. But again, that doesn't always happen, and that's what you have to be conscious of, you know. that These stories are out there, but you have to be able to put some time and dedication into your craft but that doesn't mean you shouldn't go after your dream or whatever you want to do. You should definitely still pursue those types of things and just talk to others about it. Because if you tell others what you want to do, one, it holds you accountable so that if your friends were to ask you a couple weeks later, hey, hey, I heard you were going to do a podcast. How did how did it turn out? And then you say, oh, you know, I, I just never did it because I don't think I'm good enough and They'll say, oh, nonsense, man, I'll, I'll join you on it. Maybe you've got your first guest, you know. But also, it might help alleviate these feelings of, like, I'm an alien, I feel this way, no one else does. And you can talk to your friend, and he'll say, or she, they'll say, hey, I also feel like I'm not good enough at what I want to do. And you can kind of, you know bond over something potentially or at least express yourself in a way that you felt like you weren't able to express yourself before and you know get a deeper connection to somebody because you know we we can't look at ourselves objectively it's just it's not possible uh everyone has a very subjective way of looking at themselves and others you know as well 
but you know you may be a very gifted artist and you just don't believe you are because you know no one can really believe that they're very great at something without seeming like an ass or seeming seeming very pompous you know and obviously there's a you know a little bit of you know pompousness is okay so long as you don't let your ego go to your head and just kind of ruin your art but at the same time when you've got you know no kind of uh pompousness if you just have nothing in that category you just feel you've got nothing to offer that's obviously also a very negative thing so really it's about finding balance but also being able to understand that other people are going through this struggle and that you're not alone and really just talking to people getting you know your thoughts feelings out there bonding maybe with your friends or someone close to you just getting out there chasing your dreams doing it you know within a reason i know that um not every dream is necessarily attainable you know even with lots of practice you still might you know end up maybe falling short and that's still okay at least you got out there and tried you know, a lot of what's holding people back on top of, you know, this, this self-doubt is like anxiety about things. And everyone has anxiety. Everyone goes through it in varying degrees, levels, durations, um, intensities. It's just, it's something that's out there that we really don't talk a whole lot about because people kind of like to keep their their feelings and emotions themselves because they don't want to appear weak because that's just, you know, how a lot of people are. And I don't think that it's something to be ashamed of because everyone has anxiety. Everyone goes through these things and you shouldn't feel different for feeling what we all feel and we just don't want to talk about, you know. You know, you might have the case where you're in uh, school you bring up something to a group of your friends and maybe they're all so nervous on the inside that they're like, wait a minute, he just said exactly what I'm thinking. They all take a look at themselves and they say, ha, none of us feel that way. You're different and weird. Ha, 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 ha. And then, you know, you've just instantly become separated from them even though they're, you know, just too scared to face what they're feeling inside. So they want to make you feel different or weird for you know, expressing interest and getting that out in the open and talking about it. And I I don't think that that's right, but that that reflects more on them than it does of you. That reflects that they're insecure. They, everyone's insecure, but they have more insecurity in, you know, whatever kind of anxiety you might have woken in them more so than, you know, you're fearful of you know, putting yourself out there. You know, at least you're taking that risk. They're just playing it safe and hiding behind that wall that we like to put up and keep people out. And obviously some people have to put up walls to keep people out because they've just been hurt so many times. And, you know, that's that's awful. And, we you know, that's it's not a good thing to see. But, you know... When you put up walls to keep people out, you're really just hurting yourself more in the end. Um, I actually have a really... Uh, I mean, part part of the speech is really good, but it's a, it's a clip from the show Community. It's literally from the first season, episode one. So the, I believe it was the pilot of the show. Uh, Jeff Winger, Joel McHale's character, is talking about you know, what separates us from animals, and it's that we're the only animal who can actually watch Shark Week, which is funny, and it's also because, um, you know, we relate to everything. I really wish that, you know, technology would be on my side today for once, but, uh, you know, you can't win them all. Ah, there we go. But basically, he has the whole study group in the study room and he's giving them a speech on why they should believe in themselves 
because we can't always see these things about ourselves since we can't look at ourselves objectively. So I'm going to go ahead and let that play for a second, and I'm going to come right back. Maybe. Yeah, I just... I'm going to keep all the little errors in because, you know, it lets you show... I mean, I could edit this, and I probably should, but I like to keep it a little more homebrewed, uh, a little more real. And, you know, this is a learning process, so along the way, maybe I'll decide in the future, hey, I should edit these more and make give them a more polished look because... Um, that's more enjoyable. Maybe this is more enjoyable. Hear me rant. I'm not sure yet, but we'll figure it out along the way. But here's Jeff Winger's uh, inspiring speech from the pilot of uh, Community. Feet. No, no, no. Come on. Bears have feet. We're the only species on Earth that observes Shark Week. Sharks don't even observe Shark Week, but we do. For the same reason, I can pick up this pencil, tell you its name is Steve, and go like this. Oh. And part of you dies, just a little bit on the inside, because people can connect with anything. We can sympathize with a pencil, we can forgive a shark, and we can give Ben Affleck an Academy Award for screenwriting. Big mistake. People can find the good in just about anything but themselves. Look at me. It's clear to all of you that I am awesome. But I can never admit that because that would make me an ass. But what I can do is see what makes Annie awesome. She's driven. We need driven people or the lights go out and the ice cream melts. And Pierce, we need guys like Pierce. This guy has wisdom to offer. The Dalai Lama and I... We should listen to him sometime. We wouldn't regret it. And Shirley. Shirley has earned our respect. Not as a wife, not as a mother, but as a woman. And don't test her on that, because that thing about the jukebox was way too specific to be improvised. Yeah. And Troy, who cares if Troy thinks he's all that? Maybe he is. Do you think astronauts go to the moon because they hate oxygen? No, mm. they're trying to impress their high school's prom king. And Abed, Abed's a shaman. You ask him to pass the salt, he gives you a bowl of soup. Because you know what? Soup is better. Abed is better. You are all better than you think you are. You are just designed not to believe it when you hear it from yourself. Soup, I want you to look to the person to your left. Sorry, look at the person sitting next to you. Look at her, okay. This yeah. I want you to extend to that person the same compassion that you extend to sharks, pencils, and Ben Affleck. I want you to say to that person, I forgive you. 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 A little twerk. Pierce, I'd like you to say I forgive you. You didn't say? I forget. You've just stopped being a study group. You've become something unstoppable. I hereby pronounce you a community. Oh, that's nice. I like This isn't like Breakfast Club anymore. Uh, now it's like stripes or meatballs, anything with Bill Murray, really. I agree with Abed yeah. that tonight has been very special. And now, if you'll excuse me, I have a dinner engagement with Britta. Okay, I probably could have cut it there um, before the end music started playing, but you you get the gist. Basically, the most important part of his speech is we can't see anything good about ourselves in too great of a light without being pompous, and you know we have to look to each other to find you know. Um, maybe uh our strengths not in all the time necessarily and not even that you really should be looking to other people to find what you know is great about yourself but uh you just may not be able to see what other people see about you that is great and that's pretty much the whole point of this really um you know don't let self-doubt hold you back. Don't let people tell you you're not good enough just because of some innate dumb reason. Um, do what makes you happy. Be free. I mean, so long as you're not hurting anyone else. And just, you know, live your life and try to be as happy and positive and... Uh, 
whole feeling as you can along the way. You know, it's it's a process. You know, they say that, and they who is they, but people say that happiness isn't so much a destination so much as it is a journey. So think of overcoming your self-doubt as a journey. You know, you might not ever fully get there, but it's a process you can work towards and you can definitely take steps to start that process. You know, maybe you don't want to start your brand new YouTube project just yet. You want to write out a script for it. You want to brainstorm some ideas. Obviously, that's a great start. Um, maybe you want to write a novel, you know, first you got to think up some characters, think up a plot, you know, maybe write a storyboard for it. Whatever your first step is, take that first step and see how you feel. Maybe you're going to think, well, this is dumb. Why did I waste time in this? That's fine. Push it to the side, come back and visit it maybe a week, a month, even just a day later, maybe. I mean, I would take a little more time if you're really not digging it. If you really think that it's not worth uh, journeying down that road, you know, give it some time, give it some space, let it breathe. You know, maybe maybe you show it to somebody and say, hey, I just did this as a goof, you know, even if it, you really did put some energy into it. See what they have to say. If they don't give you the best feedback, you know, and again, I would choose somebody whose feedback, you know, maybe you are at, you respect or want. Um, and just take, you know, some time away from it, come back and say, oh, you know, maybe I'm going to do step two now. And you do the step two and you're like, you know what? I got some momentum now. I'm going to actually try to do this thing. You do the thing, put it out there into the ether and see what comes back, see what sticks, you know. Um you know, it's not for everyone. You Whatever your thing is, that's what I'm talking about. It could be, it doesn't even have to be, you know, content creation or media creation. You could just be a streamer maybe. You know, you want to set up your stream. You got to make your channel first. You got to set up your account, whatever you got to do. Find out what platform you want. Find out your audience maybe. Um... Do a little bit of groundwork. Step two, you know, maybe you start streaming. Whatever you do, or you know, it's it's really whatever you want to do that you don't feel you can because you're not good enough. Because maybe you've been told you're not good enough. You just for some reason you think that you don't have it in you, but there's no harm in trying. Um, with some exceptions, maybe, you know, you shouldn't try um, being a trapeze artist in the high tent in the circus. You know, that might not be <laughs> uh, a great first time thing to just, you know, go try out. But, um, you know, with few exceptions, you know, you can't really do a whole lot of damage. You might hurt your self-esteem a little bit, but you know what? At least you'll have no... You'll you'll be able to go on in your life knowing that you gave it your best shot. You tried it. You put yourself out there. Maybe you didn't get the reception or the response you were looking for, but at least you did it, and you know that you can feel pride in doing something that made you happy. Um... Because, you know, a lot of people live to serve others, but, you know, we also need to take care of ourselves in the end and do things that make us happy, even though it might be selfish at times. You know, don't be overly selfish and only take care of yourself and not look after your friends, family, close ones, whatever. But do things to take care of yourself. Give yourself a little bit of, you know, self-care. And this could be one of your ways, you know, finally going after your dream. Um, and, yeah, so, I mean, I had a whole bunch of points I wanted to cover. I think I pretty much hit them all. Um, I'm going to probably do a whole episode on anxiety and maybe depression because, again, it's something that's not talked about often enough. Um you know, I suffer from both. Uh, a lot, most people out there do. Even if you don't chronically suffer from them, you've got, you've had moments where you felt anxiety. 
you might not have like some generalized anxiety disorder, but you've felt anxiety. You get those that feeling in your stomach. Maybe it's just butterflies because it's good anxiety, but there's also the bad anxiety where it makes you feel sick to your stomach. So I want to talk about that potentially in the future, maybe in the next episode, talk about that and depression. Um, yeah, but basically, you know, imposters will feel like they're, sorry, professionals will feel like they're imposters. Um, talking to your friends, family, close ones might help you. Um, really just get out there, put yourself out there, chase your dreams. Because your first whatever isn't going to be the best, you know, with the rare exception. But if it is, awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. I'm so happy for you if your first whatever you do is amazing enough to get you going. Um, But to wrap things up this time, I'm going to go ahead and play another folk song. Like I said, this is going to be called... You Don't Mess Around With Jim by the late, great Jim Croce. Um, For those that don't know, he tragically died in a plane crash back in the 1970s with his uh, co-writer and rhythm guitarist, whose name I wish I knew. At one time I did. It's just not coming to me right now. But Jim Croce, one of my favorite folk artists. I think that about does it. Uh, I might have something else to say after the song, but let's go ahead and hit it. Uptown got its hustlers, the Bowery got its bumps. 42nd Street got Big Jim, a walker, he a bull shooting son of a gun. Yeah, he's big and dumb as a man can come, but he's stronger than a country house. And when the bad folks all get together at night, you know they all call Big Jim Ball just because. And they say you don't tug on Superman's cape, you don't spit into the wind, you don't pull a mask off that old Lone Ranger, and you don't mess around with Jim by doing But down at home they call me Slim Yeah, I'm looking for the king of 42nd Street He drive on a drop-top Cadillac Last week he took all my money And it may sound funny But I come to get my money back And everybody say, Jack Don't you know that you don't tug on Superman's king You don't spin in the wind You don't pull the mask off an old long ranger And you don't mess around with Jim But Alrighty, um, so yeah, the late, J- late, great Jim Croce. Um, before we get 
uh, head on out of here today. I do have to mention real quick. Um, I upload this to Anchor, and on my behalf, uh, they upload it to other places. So aside from YouTube, where I directly upload what I'm recording in OBS, um, I'm also on so Anchor.fm, uh, Breaker, Google Podcasts, Pocket Casts, Radio Public, and Spotify. Just look up Bedcast, something, something. Well, something, something, Bedcast, and you should be able to find it. Um, yeah, that wrap, but uh, that about wraps it up for this episode, episode 003, Self Doubt. Don't let self doubt hold you back from doing what you want to do. Live your dreams, be free. Um, if you need something to help out, go ahead and write down three things that you're thankful for this week. And I'll catch you guys in the future. All right. Have a wonderful time. Enjoy it.